Hello YouTube, welcome to my new video. In this one, we are going to take a look at this J.O. filament dryer. I think it is cool. There are advantages and disadvantages with this machine because there are some things that I don't like and some things that, are, uh, that I really like. And we will talk about those. And here up front, I have some test prints that I did. I do know that my two of my filaments, which are actually matte PLAs, both of them were moist and they were giving some bubbles in the printed object that I'm going to show you in detail and with this filament dryer I was able to prevent some of the bubbles in there and I'm going to show you guys how to get it off from those bubbles in your printed objects by using this filament dryer and let's start okay let us identify the problem right so let's look at this one as you guys can see, this is 3D printed with matte PLA that I'm going to show you. And you can see these bubbles, right? These are because of the filament is too moist in my scenario and cause these bubbles. And as you can see, it's pretty bad. They're in everywhere, right? So we are going to how to remove this and turn it into the same exact settings. As you can see in this Charmander, there are no bubbles at all. They are cleaned. You can see the difference. How did this happen? Okay, let's talk about that. So these two are different brands and different filaments. They're both um, matte PLA, and this is from Amolen, and this is from Fulament. And two of these specifically out of like 20, 40 uh, filaments that I use, they get moist. And I didn't know what to do until I find this J.O. filament dryer which we are going to come in a moment. Let me show you the results after I use this product. On the left hand side, again, the Charmander, lots of bubbles on it, and the right hand side, dried filament Charmander. Don't worry about the other printing issues. Let's focus on the bubbles at the moment. And a big Banshee, as you can see, again, there are bubbles on it. There are other problems again with the filament, but we are focusing on the bubbles right now. And this is the printed Benji after the dry. So as you can see, there are no bubbles on the surface. And the other filament that I had, so this one is a little bit interesting uh, because when I first printed it, it was also under extrusion too. So it's like horrible and it was pretty weak and it still detaches as you can see, come out pretty weak. It's pretty bad, too, too much moisture. And as you can see, when I try it again, there are these bubbles in here, awful. And again, there are weak points. So when I was even trying to remove it from the bed, there are different points, different uh, detachment between the layers. So layers were not bonding properly. This time I dried it, but it didn't work. So I'm gonna talk about it as well. But as you can see, these are bubbles. But when I finally completed the drying sequence, it worked properly. So I do assumed at the point that my filament was so heavily moist, especially the blue one compared to the orange one. So it really went bad and I removed these. So how did I achieve this is basically for this orange filament, I use this filament dryer from J.O. And basically I use it for 55 Celsius degree for eight hours and I dried it inside this one. So we will also take a look at it in detail. This portion over here is the heater. So it heats the filament and it helped me after eight hours and 55 Celsius degree inside this one, it solved the problem bubbles removed as you see in this uh, Banshee and uh, Charmander. So both of their bubbles removed after keeping the orange filament inside of this at 55 Celsius degree for eight hours. However, uh, the blue filament, uh, blue matte filament was more problematic because I keep this blue filament inside this uh, dryer for two times, eight hours at 55 Celsius degree, and it didn't work. And it, of course it worked partially, it removed the bubbles down to this point, it, the weakness went over. So. Basically it was horrible. So it was like this at the beginning. I keep it inside the filament dryer for like um, two times, eight hours at 55 Celsius degree, this happened. And then from this to this, what I did is while I'm printing with this filament, I kept it nearby the machine and keep this 
keep this filament dryer running so that when the filament was coming out, it was also drying at the same time. So I did realize that maybe uh, the moisture was trapping inside there. So when it was like unloading, it has to go out too. So when I did printing while, when I did drying while printing, I get the surface much better and it removed almost all the bubbles in the regime. And again, these are different issues about my printer. Don't worry about that. We are just focusing on the bubbles at this point. Did this machine work for me for drying my filament? Yes, it definitely worked. Uh, it does the job, yes. And uh, I think it needs a little bit improvement so it doesn't come with this uh, Bovdun tubing. So I put this one by myself later on. So it, it doesn't come with this one. So it came uh, like this in the box and there's the good um, sponge arrangement. So it's safe to get delivered without breaking or anything. But there are some issues that I don't like about this filament holder. First of all, there is no on off button. So it sleeps by itself, but I would feel safe if there were to be an on off button. So that's one thing. The second thing is there's no hook in here. So I wanna hook it so that it doesn't open up, right? So whenever if something happens, it falls, it's just gonna open up. So that's the second issue that I find. Um, uh, annoying with this filament dryer other thing is when it's drying i can feel the heat when i touch this portion so it is a little bit heating up a lot in the area it's going maximum up to 55 celsius maybe they can bump that up so that we can use more of the uh, uh, temperature like up to 60 or maybe 70 but i do understand that that's a problematic issue because people can melt their filament inside so it's a kind of safety trick for them which i understand but again, um, I would prefer an on-off switch and I would prefer not to feel that heat when I touch here. I, I could feel it less, but it's too much heat, I believe. But it is okay, so it does the job again. And there are two holes here. I understand this first hole, but I never understand the second hole. Why there's a second hole here? That's a big question. So let's power up and I want to show you some hard to understand points in here. So when I plugged it in, it's always in sleep mode until you press a button. So when you press a button, it basically comes out like that. It says, as far as I understand, this is the present value. If you press it again, you see the set value. And here is the set value, which is 55 Celsius. And it starts to increase up to 55 Celsius. And by pressing these buttons, you can lower it and raise it up. But again, maximum is 55 Celsius. And if you leave it like that, it will go back to the present value is normally and when it hits the target value it stays there 55 54 it fluctuates between them and it stays there right when you hold and press this one for a long time nothing really happens so on the right hand side there is nothing if you hold and press the left one you move to the time again there's a present value set value so you can change the time for like how long you want, but it only accumulate, it only increments in R, no minutes or nothing. And this basically goes up to 24 hours. That's the maximum time and it increments one by one. And you can do that however you like. And when you set that, um, you leave it like this. There's no confirmation or no enter button or anything. So that confuses me and I had to and I had to test it out to see what's going on. And you leave it like that and it stays like that. I don't like that timing staying there, those kind of stuff. And when I want to return, I press hold, it returns and as you can see it's still heating up. And that's it. So when you leave it, it stays there up to 55 degree when it hits the target value and it stays there until the timer runs out. What happens after the timer runs out, display sleeps and it cools down, but there's nothing else. There's no beep, there's no notification. It's a very simple device, very, very simple. And it, was, uh, and, uh, it wasn't that much clear in their user manual, so I didn't like the user manual too. I think right now what I did in this video is a better user manual than they provide. But let's open this one up. Right now it's heating. There's warning signs in here about the heat, so I can feel it's hot. And there are roller bear, uh, and there are rollers here, so when you put your filament in here, while it's getting the heat from the bottom, you can also make it roll. So 
Let's make one filament roll in there. So I'm gonna put this one in here. And as you can see, it's easy to roll. I'm gonna lock this one here. See, it's very easy to roll. I, I think it's good, like it's real good, but at the same time, it could be better. I hope uh, the manufacturer watched this video and see the points that I addressed in this video, right? And the other thing is this machine do not come with the tubing. So you need to buy also tubing because if you wanna continue the heating uh, function of this machine, and if you want your filament to come out here, uh, you cannot just directly put this one. You cannot just directly put this one from here because when it's doing up and down, it just like pulls too much of the filament and it's sometimes having a hard time to remove from there. That is why what you need to do, that's why what you need to do, I find it very convenient to buy a tubing and put it in like this so that you can reroute your filament from under it. Yeah, you can reroute your filament under it and you can basically pull it when this portion comes to your 3D printer. I think this way it is much better. And this thing always drops. I don't like that. It's always drops. I don't know why we have this. Yeah, this is the Geo filament dryer, Fila dryer S1. Maybe S2 version is going to be much better. But so far, it is so good. It works great. It does the job in the way that I wanted it. And as you can see, guys, I think this is the most impressive picture here. Video. This is the most impressive frame here. This baby helped me to dry my filament and helped me to remove all these bubbles. Same settings printed. And basically, I was able to remove all the bubbles. And again, another comparison with a different filament that is moist, as you guys can see, the bubbles are gone. And another comparison over here. Another comparison over here, bubbles are gone. So I like it, it works great. And it can also dry your filament while you are printing. So I think that's another good thing, an opportunity compared to the food dehydrator. So I like that that way. And this thing comes with a piece of paper here, uh, the user guide. It shows very little information how to use machine. I think because they think the machine is very simple, but actually we need more information. But I think the real good portion of this user manual is the temperature reference that we have. So basically they have the baking temperature and the time that's required to do that. So. This helps, so if you guys want to take a look at it, you can take the screenshot too. And by using these settings, it works. For me, it was matte PLA. It wasn't listed here, but I, I tried my matte PLA at 50. It didn't work. Uh, so I bump it to 55 and matte PLA at 55 demoisturized. And I was able to get the results. So, and I think at this point, results speaks for themselves. And we can go further deep in uh, zooming. And as you guys can see, how to remove the bubbles. Pretty decent, huh? And another point, let's take a look at it like this. And I really enjoyed this show off. Let me know if you guys used this one before or tried similar product rather than food dehydrator. Even if you use a food dehydrator, let me know too. Let's discuss and I want to know your opinion as well. What would you like to see in this machine as a development so that you can buy it? And if would you buy it now as it is after seeing this video or would you like to buy an advanced version? If so, what functions you wanted to see there? I think that's really important to know. And let's put this one to the side. I would like to make another uh, point here. So this is a filament dryer from Mars Gizmo. I really liked it. I just like basically did it. And this is a Mars Gizmo filament bunker. You can put your silica here and there are rollers. After this unfortunate filament issue with the moisture and I moved to this filament bunker system. And I think it is really good and it saves time and money and it's really cheap to build too. It's a cereal box and basically I'm right now putting in things. Let's zoom out. I'm just putting this one in and then I'm sealing it like this. 
it's, it takes a couple minutes to build and it's very cheap to build and basically it does the job and you can put your monitor here to check filament moisture and it's right now 42% moist um, where I live is pretty moist place unfortunately and since I opened it it bumped up generally this one drops down to 17% and you can always change your silicas from here and especially when you pull this as you can see with the roller bearings it's easy to move in so i'm going to put the link down below for mars gizmos filament bunker that basically dries your filament which brings up the point i think i think this machine over here should also have moisture monitor located here so that we can basically track and monitor the moisture inside this and this one should be better sealed too of course that would be a great upgrade to this filament dryer so that we can know what's the final condition of our filament when it is dried. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys like it. If so, click the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if this method worked for you and if you removed your bubbles as I did, comment down below. And if it didn't work, again comment down below. Let us know if you have any other tips and tricks for how to dry your filament. I know some of the people do food dehydrator technique let us know comment down below again and yeah let's discuss and see you guys in the next video